Automations are what really unlocks the true power and potential of a smart home. Today, I want to share some pretty basic concepts and ways that you could take your home kit automations to the next level. This is sort of going to be a deep dive into automations, but we're going to keep it all very simple. We'll discuss some basic concepts like using multiple triggers, conditions, and third party apps to supercharge your automations. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane, if this is your first time here, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos published every Sunday. Today's video is brought to you by Trend Micro. I use the Trend Micro Premium Security Suite to protect all of my devices, which is a lot of Apple devices mostly, um, against malware, viruses, ransomware, and other threats. You can use this for up to 10 devices and I love how easy it is to set up and protect all of my family's devices, iPhones, iPads, laptops, etc. It also turns any hotspot into a secure Wi-Fi connection with a VPN and you also get access to other great tools like identity theft protection, parental controls, and even 24-7 emergency assistance. Check out the link in the description below for 10% off of your purchase of the premium security suite. And big thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. So this video was inspired by a recent conversation some of us were having over in our channel members discord group and the question being brought up was is it possible and if so how to create automations with multiple conditions or even multiple triggers and to go further can you determine whether all or if only one of those conditions must be true in order for an automation to run now if I'm starting to lose you don't worry hang in there we're gonna talk through all this and I'm gonna explain to you uh, just exactly how these kinds of automations work. Understanding these concepts can really be helpful when you get to a point in your smart home journey when you have, you know, let's say an idea for more advanced automation, but maybe you really aren't sure, you know, how to go about it or if it's even possible. Understanding these concepts will really help you with that. So let's start at the basic level. A smart home automation is really made up of three parts your event or the trigger, which is which starts the automation, conditions, which are optional additional attributes that must also be true in order to run the automation, and lastly, the end state or the accessories or scenes that you wish to set if all those conditions are met. But essentially, an automation says, if something happens, then do this. That's really the most basic version. Then if you throw in a condition, it would say if something happens and something else is true, then do this. Some examples are if motion is detected, turn on the light. That's a super basic automation using just a trigger and the end state. Motion is the trigger and turning on the light is the end state. Now let's add a condition in there. Conditions can be value conditions like the current state of other accessories. They can be location based like whether or not you're home or they can be time based conditions. Using our example, we'll add a time condition that says if motion is detected at night, turn on the light. See there, it's the same automation, but we added that time condition there in the middle. Now our automation will only run at night. So it has to be night. That has to be true in order to run this complete automation. So understanding how this works and the parts that make up the automation is really the foundation that we need. Now, once you understand this, you can take it even further and really supercharge your automation. But I do have to admit, this is where it can get a little bit confusing. All right, so first of all, we're using HomeKit, not to be confused with the Home app. You see, the Home app is just Apple's user interface for HomeKit, but HomeKit as a software framework can actually do quite a bit more than just the default Home app allows. So let me explain where I'm going with all this. When we set up an automation in the Home app, first we're asked to choose our event or our trigger. Again, this is what triggers the automation to run. 
You can choose from people arrive or leave, a time of day, a HomeKit accessory is controlled, or a sensor detects something. I'll choose the sensor to stick with our example. I'll choose my front porch motion sensor and make sure detects motion is selected. Underneath that, you'll see a couple of other options here. These are actually considered our conditions. For example, I can tap time and then tap at night. Now this automation will only run when motion is detected at night. We also have the option here to choose when certain people are home or away. Then we can move forward and choose which scenes or accessories are controlled when those conditions are met and the automation runs. The thing is here in the native home app, we don't have many options at all in regards to adding multiple triggers or conditions. What if you wanna have multiple triggers like I don't know, turn on a light when motion is detected, say on the front porch or in the driveway. That would be two triggers, essentially. Sure, you could set up multiple automations in the home app, but you know that's no fun. I don't really wanna do that. And even further, what if you only wanna turn the light on when motion is detected if your other lights are off? Just as an example, with the home app, you can't use other accessories as conditions right now. And this is where our third-party HomeKit apps come into play. Now, to be clear, these third-party HomeKit apps are using the same HomeKit data and framework that the native Home app uses. These apps just often give us more access to everything that we can do with HomeKit. Apple, like they do with many things, you know, they like to simplify the native Home app just in order to maintain easy, you know, user experience and a simple interface, I'm sure, which I can understand. But let's discuss these third-party apps uh, and how they can give you even more control and access to your home automations. There are three apps that we'll discuss today. The Home Plus app, currently called the Home Plus 5 app in the App Store. There is the Controller for HomeKit app, and there is the Eve app. Now these are all great apps. I've mentioned them all on the channel before. The first two are probably my favorites uh, just because they give you slightly more control, but the Eve app is a great one and still allows you to set up automations with conditions and the Eve app is free. So definitely worth mentioning. I think all three of these are great apps and probably just good apps to have in your toolkit once you start getting a little more serious about your smart home and your automations. At least having one of these paid ones is probably a good idea. I really love the UI of the Home Plus app, but the controller for HomeKit app has a Mac version, which I also really love. Both of these apps can do pretty much the same or at least similar things. But I'm gonna use the Home Plus app today because again, I really like the interface and it's actually quite similar to the Home Apps interface. So if we create a new automation, you can name it, you can choose a folder to place it in, this way you can actually organize your automations, which is something we also can't do in the native home app. And you can see here, these are our three parts of our automation that I was talking about. We have our event trigger here, then conditions, and then the accessories or scenes that we want to control. I'm gonna create a couple of automations to show you how versatile this can be. The first one will trigger either when the front door is unlocked or someone rings our doorbell. So we will actually have to have two triggers here. Then the condition will be after dark and the end state will be to turn on our front foyer light. So if we tap add event, you'll see the options here. Let's tap accessory state. I look for my front door lock. Lock current state changes to unlocked. Good, now let's add another event. Choose accessory state. I'll choose my doorbell, which is currently the circle view doorbell camera, and I can select the programmable switch event. And choose changes to single press. So now I have two triggers, something again that we can't do in the native home app. So the way multiple triggers works is that either one of these can trigger the automation. So if one of these events occurs, the automation will run. Now we can choose our conditions. I tap this and looky here, we definitely have more options than the home app gives us. Remember the home app only gives us time of day and person location as conditions. But here I can also choose accessory states as conditions. 
But for this example, I'll be choosing the time of day and just change this to between sunset and sunrise. You even have the option to choose an offset time like plus or minus one hour before or after sunrise, but I'll leave that part blank for now. Now we can just choose our accessory. I'll look for my front foyer chandelier, turn it on, hit save. Then you also have a couple other options down here. I could select turn off after, let's just go with five minutes and done. Now one thing I do wanna point out that does kinda of suck is that when you create an automation using a third party HomeKit app like this and you select accessories like I just did that isn't a part of a scene, it will create a new scene automatically because of this automation. This is kind of annoying and can get a little confusing, so I did want to point this out. This is not by design by the app developers. This is a limitation of HomeKit and one of those restrictions that Apple just has right now on these app developers. So any, basically any third-party HomeKit app will do something like this when creating a new automation um, and triggering devices that's not a part of a scene already. Anyways, a little off track, but again, something I did want to uh, make you aware of just so you know what's happening if you see those weird scenes that are kind of automatically generated from these automations. Now here's another very simple example that I have that utilizes multiple triggers. I have a status light that I want to turn red when my alarm is armed in any kind of mode. So I created multiple triggers. Uh, now it doesn't matter if it's armed to night, home, or away. If any of those happen, it will turn my light red. And I don't have to create separate automations for each of these. So that's just a really simple example of how something like this is better and easier to set up than doing you know, three separate automations in the home app. And real quick, if you're liking this kind of content here on the channel, let me know by hitting that like button down below. Okay, let's do one more simple automation. I wanna show you how you can modify your conditions even further to determine whether all or only one of your conditions must be true in order for the automation to run. So this can be pretty powerful. It'll make sense in just a second if it doesn't already. Let's create a new automation that will shut my garage automatically at 10 p.m. But I don't want the garage to shut if I'm out there working or doing something like you know drinking beer with my friends. Uh, that wouldn't be good. So I'm gonna choose two conditions here. One will be my motion. So I wanna make sure that there is no motion in the garage. And two will be my garage lights. I wanna make sure that the lights are off, which means no one is out there at 10 p.m. So we'll add the condition, choose accessory state. I'll look for my garage motion sensor. Make sure it's set to no motion is detected. We'll add another condition accessory state again, and this time choose my garage ceiling lights. So as it stands, both of these conditions must be true in order for this automation to run. But if I tap adjust, I can change it to only require one or the other to be true. And here you go, now you can see it says under any of these conditions. Then I can add my accessory or scene, in this case my garage door to shut, and we're all done. So the ability here to require either all or only one of these conditions to be met is pretty powerful. That's one of those things that you can do in the Home Plus app and the controller for HomeKit app, but you can't do in the Eve app and definitely not something you can do uh, you know, in Apple's Home app. Now, if you're getting into automations and you're still a little unclear of the differences between personal automations and home automations and shortcuts and all that, check out my 101 video right here that breaks down all those differences. Be sure to subscribe for new HomeKit videos published every Sunday. Thanks again to Trend Micro for sponsoring today's video. And again, check out that discount code down below for 10% off of their premium security suite. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.